Welcome back to the channel guys. So today we're going to be learning about how to easily paint German World War II infantry from the mid to late war period. So this way it's going to take you through from sort of 1942 really all the way through to 45. So again I base coded with just a, uh, a matte grey paint that I got from Super Cheap Auto. Um, seems to do the job quite nicely. Then for the German uniforms I started off with German cam dark green. <clears throat> I didn't paint the whole of the uniform in this. I cherry picked parts from the different miniatures. So some of them I did the tunics, uh, some of them I did the helmets, some of them I did the trousers. Uh, just to get a bit of a, a mishmash of colour patterns. Uh, different photos that I've seen historically, you have quite often the tunics were darker than the trousers, but then in other photos um, and images that I've seen, the trousers and the tunics are the same colour. Uh, sometimes the trousers were the dark colour and the tunics were lighter. As the war progressed, my understanding is that supply chain issues led to basically you just getting what you were given and being happy with that. So that's kind of the, the route that I've gone with these chaps, is just uh, treat them all as individuals and try and get that sort of mid to late war feel. To start off, I wasn't too sure uh, when I first put it on how it was going to come out, because it did look very green, um, but later on it comes down quite nicely. So the miniatures that we're using here are Plastic Soldier Company uh, Late War Germans and as I said in the English or the British uh, video last time these German miniatures do appear to be sort of slightly smaller scale uh, the heads and things are slightly smaller than the, the British troops um, but I do think they're actually in a slightly more realistic proportion so there's no issues for me there So the next colour that I started doing was the black, so I put black for the boots, um, I did as the base coat of the weapons, um, any metal areas, so uh, parts of the grenades, uh, the webbing, uh, entrenching tools, the mug on top of the flask, all of those sort of areas, just got a nice bit of black put onto them. I know by this stage in the war again, jack boots were more or less out, uh, not entirely, but more or less they weren't uh, being supplied just due to the fact that they used up so much leather, so they were get using more ankle boots, and brown boots were coming in, so it wasn't always black. I did black for all of mine just because I was lazy, I couldn't be bothered to uh, do some in brown, uh, but again you could do that, it's personal choice. And you can see again my lovely little uh, painting holder. Nice piece of wood with a plant label. But what the hey. Does the job, so I can't complain. You could almost say American ingenuity. Actually, I was born in Yugoslavia, but what the heck. Anyone comment below from what film that was from? I look forward to seeing the responses. So next we're using chocolate brown, and this is going to be used on the rifles, um, basically anything wooden, so the rifles, uh, wooden sort of sticks on the grenades, uh, the canteens because they had a brownish sort of uh, fabric surrounding them. I also use this brown on the bread bags. I know they're a lighter colour but they'll be lightened at a later date. 
if I were doing an autumn pattern on the camouflage, I've used this as probably my base coat as well. But for these ones, I've gone more for the spring camo pattern, um, spring summer. But I will be doing a tutorial specifically on doing camouflage at a later date, so we can drill down into that in a little bit more detail. I mean, that's one of the things that actually drew me more to an interest in the German forces at the Second World War is actually just the camo patterns rather than just grey or green. They really push the boundaries with it. If you can hear that in the background, I'm very sorry, but we're going through a bit of a storm at the moment in New Zealand, so it's really big gusts of wind blowing everything around outside. Anyway, next up is khaki and I use this to go around for the gaiters around their boots. Then we've got the old flat flesh from Tamiya again for their skin tones. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, so the, the different uniforms, um, it's probably one of the things that got me uh, attracted to the period in the first place. Then there would have to be the Panzers, uh, the different models. And I mean, I used to be down at Bobby, uh, Bobbington when I was in the army, and the tank museum was right next door, so I'd spend so much time in there looking at them. Great times. Uh, so great vehicles, uh, just to spend hours looking at them. Uh, so for the wash this time, I thought I would try something slightly different. And instead of using black, I used the chocolate brown again. And just wanted to see whether it would make much of a difference between black and brown. And I think it actually came out pretty well. Again, I should probably have done a comparison, one in black and one in brown. But oh well, maybe some point in the future I'll do a comparison. Uh, this time around seemed to work quite nicely. Once the wash had dried, which took uh, probably about half an hour, it's time to start highlighting. So I use German field grey now to go over the dark green from earlier. This way it's just going to um, break up that dark green look and actually bring them back more in line with a field grey sort of uniform. Then we use leather brown to go over all of the wooden areas, so the rifle stocks, uh, the stick for the grenades, um, the water bottles, etc. Now I'm using German bright green. This is just for the camouflage pattern, just because it's quite bright, so it's uh, on the smaller miniatures stands out quite nicely. So that's on the helmets and on the Zeltbarns, which are on their, uh, the back of their weapon. Khaki, I'm using this now to do the bread, bas uh, bread baskets, bread bags, and again on the camouflage patterns just to uh, add in a little bit of, sort of light brown. Now we go back with silver over the four parts on the rifles, um, also onto the grenades, the entrenching tools, and basically anywhere where there would be a bit of silver, and or metal I should say, on the equipment. Yeah, and I kind of go for the brighter colours where possible just to make the, the miniatures stand out a little bit more, seeing as they are quite small. If it was a 28mm, I'd probably go for the slightly darker, uh, but personal preference. Then the final colour now is just to go back over the flesh to just bring them back up. And that pretty well brings us around. What I didn't show is I base, uh, base coated the, the bases themselves in brown, and then I did the flocking. I did that off screen, uh, because I've shown that pretty well in every single video I've done so far. 
so I didn't think you needed to see it again. But if you are interested in how I do it, just check out pretty well any of my other videos for uh, World War II or the American Civil War. So that pretty well brings us around to the end of the video. Really enjoyed painting these miniatures. I can't wait to get more on the table. Um, I'm going to be building up a couple of chain of command armies. Uh, so I will do some updates as the units get built. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching. Please like and subscribe. And please share so that the channel can keep growing. Also leave any comments on things you'd like me to do in the future. Thanks guys. See you next time.